So we've got some Sacred Cats that we can embalm. Adorned Pouncer, it's a pretty good one as well that we can eternalize. Great against the red deck as well, this deck in general. Got a lot of life gain. Got a Neutral Priest, we've got Charter Course and Strategic Planning to kind of filter our draw. Maybe get some embalmed creatures in the graveyard. We've got Sun Scorch Champion, also great at uh, gaining some life. Putting a blocker in play against the red decks. And then we can also turnalize it for 4 mana, so even if we discard it, it's fine. And then we can use the discard mode from the Eternalize to discard even more Embalm or Eternalize creatures. We've got two Champion of Wits, got lucky to just randomly open one of them, so we have two. Then uh, two Anointed Procession, had to use my uh, rare wild card from the previous stream to get a second one. think two is a good number, you could go even more than two, but I don't think it's all that necessary since... Uh, one is usually good enough. Then we've got some exile effects for Scarab Gods to cast out to Ixalan's Binding. Or Vizier of Many Faces, which is pretty nice as well, since you can often just discard it to your Charter Course. Or if you find it with strategic planning, you can let it go to the graveyard. And then you have a 5 mana clone, which is also a token, which works nicely with Anointed Procession. And one Avon Wind Guide, which has actually been quite nice as well, giving your tokens Vigilance and Flying. Works very nicely with our next card, Crested Sunmare, since those horse tokens, uh, if you can give them Vigilance and Flying, then you can both play offense and defense with the indestructible horses. And uh, Crested Sunmare by itself is just a very good card in this deck. I think uh, we got lucky to open the second copy pretty early on, and uh, three Regal Caracal also happened to just open one randomly, so we have three of them, all pretty nice combos, and of course a Regal Caracal. You have uh, Sacred Cat and Adorned Pouncer, and especially giving the Adorned Pouncer plus 1 plus 1 and lifelink is a pretty big game. So very good deck against the mono red decks out there. Uh, as long as they don't have Rampaging Ferocidon, you should be able to win most of the time. And then our mana base, we've got 9 planes, 2 Shafadjuns, which can be useful if you go with the Regal Caracal route. Make lots of tokens, give them plus 1 plus 1, can be useful. 2 Ibnu Rivulet, which is also useful at milling yourself to maybe put some Embalm creatures in the graveyard. And then uh, some Islands, one Farmland, which we happened to open, and 4 Meandering River. So that's the Blue-White Embalm deck, which I've been uh, playing recently off-stream. So it's time to play it on-stream now. This hand I don't think we can keep. Alright, this hand's okay. Pretty bad against the red deck. But maybe we can scry to something we can play early on. Land, we kind of won land number 4, but we also need to find something to play before turn 4. So I think we have to bottom. Alright, we're up against vampires. So I think we're cycling this. Got too many 4 drops otherwise. <laughs> Even more 4 drops. Alright, there's a 1 drop. Alright. Opponent making lots of tokens. Yeah, I think we just uh, procession it up. Alright, so I expect our opponent to play an Anthem effect next turn, which is going to be pretty scary. Can just play another Anointed Procession to set up this Vizier, but Vizier is not even a token when we play him right now. I think it's between Procession and Planning. I think I'll go with the Procession here. That way if we do draw or find more Sacred Cats, for example, with the Strategic Planning, we might be able to string something together. Alright, Bono keeps making 1-1s. One but they're still not attacking us. They're maybe setting up to attack us for lethal in one big turn. So I think we just strategic planning. And then uh, hope to find some embalmed creatures. Sunscorched Champion. Alright, so 
We could take the Sunscorch Champion since we can just play that here. Which would be fine. But I kind of want to take the Caracal since we can play that next turn with Double Procession, which will stabilize us. And then if we survive next turn, our opponent doesn't know about the Caracal. But yeah, if the opponent doesn't kill us next turn, we get to play Caracal, turn after, copy it with Vizier, and then we should be able to take over. But they could do a lot of damage here, which is what we're worried about. Alright, there's Legion Lieutenant. Alright, just a one Anthem effect, so we're taking 16. Yeah, that hurts. Could also uh, eternalize champion and eternalize and embalm sacred cats, so we would get four sacred cats and four champions. Does that help? We would also gain 16 life, so I guess getting back champions also reasonable. But if we just play regal caracal, we would get two, four, eight cat tokens. But the problem is, if our opponent gets rid of the caracal itself, then those cat tokens aren't that impressive. So I actually think maybe getting back the Sunscorch Champion is going to be better for us, since that can actually block profitably. So let's embalm Sacred Cats. And then Eternalize Champion, discarding Sacred Cat. Could also, I guess we could also discard Vizier here if we want to, since then we can get back the Vizier as a token, which can be relevant. But so he's getting back Sacred Cat. Yeah, I think we'll discard the Vizier. So I don't think we can die here, but our opponent can do a lot of damage. And then maybe next turn we can Excellence Binding the Lieutenant. Alright, there's a second Lieutenant. We missed the opportunity to use the Excellence Binding on the first one, but didn't really have a choice there. So, opponent attacking with everyone, so maybe they did the math and we're dead. Guess we'll find out shortly. So, taking 15, so we're definitely not dead here. I guess our opponent can have the trick, giving their creatures plus 2 plus 2, and then we're dead. That one's going to be hard to beat here. So I don't think we want to play around it too much. So let's say we don't play around the plus two plus two effect. So right now we're taking four times three is 12. Gaining two. So if they have the plus two effect, that's five times four is 20. We're still not actually dead. So I think think this is okay, we want to leave as many cats in play for when we play the Caracal, and if they have the trick, which I guess is likely, but I don't think we can beat the trick here. Alright, they didn't have the trick. So that worked out, and our opponent scoops it up. And a rowdy crew. Alright, this sounds okay. It's got a little bit of everything. Pretty good against the red deck. Turn on Sacred Cat, turn to Priest is kind of where you want to be in that matchup. Um, we could play the Meandering River, turn 1, but given that we have two 2 drops, we can on turn 3 play a tap land and another 2 drop, which is still fine. Alright, it's not a red deck, just a blue deck. So if we're up against a blue deck, I kind of like attacking and then casting Charter Course, just to get our advantage right away. And it's not like playing the Priest is super important here. But on Cycles, River Serpent, so they're on the God Pharaoh's Gift plan. Which uh, is a scary plan, but usually if we can find our Crested Sunmare, we can beat them. Even if they do get to go off with their 
uh, got Pharaoh's Gift. So that's going to be our goal here, is to find Crested Sunmare or Anointed Procession. Those are kind of the cards that can take over. So I think that means we want to play Champion of Wits here to try and dig for those cards. And here we can discard Sacred Cats and... Let's see, next turn we can just play a Sunscorched Champion, which is fine. And then on turn 5 we can, I guess, maybe just Eternalize Dorn Pouncer, that seems good. Yeah, the Combat Celebrant Edition certainly is a scary one. Especially if they can start looping them, but in this kind of blue-white um, Embalm deck you can put up so many blockers that they can't actually keep attacking with the Celebrants since they will just die when they try to attack for the first time. So I don't think this matchup is all that bad. So let's see, opponent's got two creatures in the graveyard so far. Um, I don't mind attacking here now that they don't have the Gate of the Afterlife in play, since once they do, trading becomes a lot worse for us. So let's attack with both. Opponent takes it. And... Yeah, I think we go tap land plus Sunscorched Champion here. And this sets up the... Eternalize Adorn Pouncer and then play Avon Wind Guy the following turn to give it flying and vigilance nicely. So next turn we're eternalizing the pouncer and then the turn after we can wind guide plus sacred cats from the graveyard. Opponent just now finds their red mana. Another champion of wits. So let's get in there. Opponent does now trade. Probably want to prevent taking too much damage. And uh, we have to hope that this Avon Wind Guide plan works out. And we can still just embalm it as well later if they do kill it somehow. So I guess we have to hope they don't have removal for the Adorned Pouncer here. But in blue red, it's going to be mostly limited to 3 damage removal. Interesting attack from the Champion of Wits here. Not sure what that means. Don't really see how blocking can go wrong here. They might just want to enable raid. They maybe want to chart a course here and draw two cards. Alright, they do have a raid card, but it's a shipwreck looter instead. And they also just want creatures in the graveyard for when they play their gate. And Protean Raider copying our Adorned Pouncer, but as it turns out, our Adorned Pouncer is slightly better than the opponent's Adorned Pouncer, since our Adorned Pouncer has Vigilance and Flying. And... Yeah, let's attack. And do we want to play Priest or get back a Sacred Cat? Um... It's more mana efficient to play the Priest, but next turn we're getting back Champion of Wits anyways. I'll get back a Sacred Cat. I guess they can have instant speed removal for the Wind Guide so that our cat loses flying and they can still trade with, with their Protean Raider Pouncer. But uh, even Wind Guide as a one-off is pretty useful. Alright, so our opponent does have the Gate. And they can get their gift. So what can they get back? Champion of Wits doesn't really do it. So I don't think our opponent has any great outs. They can't get back any flyers. They can't get anything back that kills the Wind Guide. So I think they're just dead here. Yeah, not sure what they are looking for. Alright, sweet.
No, this sounds reasonable. If you look at this hand, it kind of looks like so a limited deck perhaps, but when the synergies come together, it's pretty powerful. So I'm fine running out Sacred Cannon to Magma Spray since we have the Pouncer that also dies to Magma Spray. They didn't have it. This hand's not amazing against Red, but it's okay. Don't have any Sun Scorched Champions, which are pretty important. Don't have any Anointer Priests, but a Sacred Cant goes a long way. Especially when you can back it up with other plays that are relevant and affect the board. If our play was Sacred Cat and then do nothing until turn 4, we could be in trouble, but we do still get to make other plays as well here. So turn 2 Pouncer, turn 3 Taplan, turn 4 Wind Guide or Binding. And it's nice to have a Binding against potential Ferocidons, Hazorats, Glorybringers. So it's still nice to have a 4 mana removal spell against the most aggressive deck in the format, which is a pretty strange thing to say, but I think it's true. Alright, Kendra can get in for two. I think we just stay on defense with Sacred Cat and Pouncer next turn though. They have a second Kendra I want to be able to block. Ooh, Anointer Priest. I think we want to go with Anointer Priest instead. Just because it's less susceptible to Magma Sprays. Alright, there's a Ferocidon. Um, but we do have the Ixalan's Binding, so that's not a problem. So our opponent has the best card they could possibly have against us. But we might still be able to survive here. So now our hope is that they don't also have something like a Glorybringer, since now we're out of removal for it. Alright, oof, that's uh, also a problem. But I think we still get rid of the Ferocidon here, especially now that we drew the Caracal. So I'm gonna get rid of the Ferocidon. It might be hard to raise a Phoenix if we miss our next land drop. But, I don't know, if we want to win this game we need to gain life, I think is the most important argument here. And we do have the Wind Guide to jump for a turn, so it's not exactly a four turn clock. Rigging Runner, sure. Alright, nice. So this should swing the game in our favor. Definitely attacking with uh, the Pouncer here, just want to gain life while we can. Can't attack with Sacred Cat since they can just block with Rigging Runner. And we won't get to gain any life because of First Strike. But Pouncer has Double Strike, so that's good to go. Alright, Bone lets us gain 4 life. And now, unless they have another Ferocidon, I guess that doesn't even work since it's under Excellence Binding. Alright, they have Lightning Strike for Caracal, but still have a bunch of life linkers out. And now the Saven Wind Guide. It's gonna be pretty sweet. Man, I like this deck. Crasher, sure. If they stay on defense, that's also fine since we should have the better late game. So, yeah. Can just suicide in the Adorn Pouncer just to be able to eternalize it. That seems reasonable. Could do the same with the Sacred Cats, but that's maybe not as necessary. I guess we can attack with one Sacred Cat. Just want to get the Pouncer in the graveyard. Alright. Get back Sacred Cat. I guess we cycle first. Mm, 
Get back sacred cats. Say go. Do have to be a bit careful here that our opponents can't just attack with everyone and deal a ton of damage. Doesn't look to be the case. So I'll just run it back. Firebrands, if they have a magma spray here, things could get messy if they can magma spray the wind guide. But now Exxon's binding should be game. They could still have a lightning strike for the wind guide to try and ambush our cats. So we're going to be a bit careful here. All right, opponent scoops it up. All right, this hand's a bit on the slow side. Definitely borderline, but I think I'll keep... All right, Desert of the Fervent, so probably not Mono Red Aggro. Don't think we'll be cycling the farmland, so might as well play it out. Red Green. Autopack Hunt Master, so dinosaurs. All right. Could be in a bit of trouble here, since we're off to a pretty slow start. Opponent can ramp into a hasty dinosaur here. But Ixxon's Binding is nice against dinos. So we do have some removal here. Don't care too much about arranging raptors. So next turn we get to play the champion. If we didn't have land number 4, I would consider strategic planning. But since we have land number 4, I think playing the champion is okay here. Opponents also didn't give their raptors haste, so they might have missed that interaction. So they just missed out on two damage, perhaps. Don't really want to block the raptors with the champion, since we don't want to give our opponent a free land. But still nice to have the 2-3 out there, in case we need it. And then next turn we have to decide what to do. Savage Stomp, that's fine. So we could also just eternalize the champion next turn if we wanted to, which makes it big enough to block the raptors. Alright, now that we picked up a land, I think that's an easy play. Since we don't really want Ixalan's Binding, the 3-4. And now that we have land number 5 for the Caracal, Definitely just want to get this guy in play. If we were going to miss a land, then I would have considered strategic planning there. Another Savage Stomp, okay. That was kind of the worst case scenario here, but still have the Exxon's Binding in case we need to get rid of the Raptors. So not too concerned. And I think I would rather, <laughs> now that we drew the third Caracal, I'm just going to spam some Caracals here. So that's Caracal number one. Just have to hope they don't have Lightning Strike plus Sword Tooth here. Alright, looks like they do have Lightning Strike. Let's see if they also have the Sword Tooth. Although I think they could have played Sword Tooth last turn, so it seems unlikely. Ripjaw Raptors, sure. Give it haste, attack us for 8. We get to follow up with Caracal. Attack for 4. So, still reasonable. Not really at risk of dying, unless they have a hasty Dino that has Trample or something. And the third Caracal should do it. Rover's fine. So we kind of want them to attack here with the Raptor and the Raptors, but they don't. Alright, so now what? Can play Caracal number 3, or we can do something else like uh, planning or charter course. Guess we could also get back the Wind Guide, which is kind of exciting, although it is risky for opponent has Lightning Strike, but they didn't last turn, so I don't think they have removal for the Wind Guide. 
Otherwise, they would have just killed the Caracal and attacked us. So let's attack with a few hate or uh, vigilant cat tokens here. Uh oh, our opponent's hovering over our creatures. All right, never mind. So that works. And there we go. The sand's fine. Gotta represent that Assassin Scatter. Alright, looks like a blue-white kind of mirror. Search Rust Counter, so opponent might be on the more controlling build instead. So get Resolve Champion of Wits. Discard Priest and Cat. So hopefully they tap out f so we can resolve the procession. Seems unlikely. Alright, Gideon, nice. I guess Procession's not guaranteed to stay in play for long. Given the presence of castouts and Ixalan's Binding. What's our other option? Just Embalming Anointer Priest, that doesn't seem that exciting. So yeah, let's get a Procession in play. Get it cast out and then go from there. Could have considered getting back Sacred Cat to set up Crested Sunmare. But if they're on the more controlling deck, they don't have a reason to tap out if we don't have the procession in play. So, let's get back Priest. And get back the Kitty. So now we can start pressuring Gideon, set up Crested Sunmare. Put on Cycles, Countervailing Winds. Let's see, they have three cards in Graveyard so far. What is Gideon going to do about this? He's gonna plus on the Champion of Wits. Alright, cast out some nice draw. How about we... Attack Gideon with some priests and one kitty. And then we're fine if they sell the wreckage us. And given that that worked, don't think we want to run out to Crested Sunmare. Instead, I'm going to end of turn set up a cast out so we can still play out the priest here. Might also just cast out the Ascanta here. That's enough. Don't really care about Gideon. So I'm gonna end of turn cast out the Ascanta, I think. Of course our opponent doesn't know what we're gonna target yet, if they wanna counter this. And now the Crested Sunmare is good to go. Alright, this worked out. So now Gideon's dead, and we get a Crested Sunmare with two horses. Let's see how they handle this. 
They could just go approach into approach and now we're dead. But if they don't approach us, then I like our chances. Alright, looks like our opponent's uh, going for it. It took them a while, so maybe they don't have the second one. So let's see, if we main phase charter course, what can we find? Maybe a regal caracal that we can play. Let's see, so 5, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So yeah, I think we should main phase charter course since that can find a caracal for the win. Not quite, but Ibnu Rivulet is relevant. So do we keep the Rivulet to maybe mill the approach? Or I guess we only have to discard one, so let's discard planes. Um, yeah, tank with everyone. And... So let's see, they draw a card, they can Ascanta, and then Approach is still there, so I don't think we need to show them the reveal it. So let's just play Procession, say go. And hope they don't have a second approach. Looks like they do. Alright. Yeah, we kind of got Exodia out there. Feels bad. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series. So if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.